I haven't been this excited about a graphics card in a long time. Oh wait, not this one, this one. Whoa, Brett, that thing's so tiny, no way it's good at gaming. Congrats, you're right. But you're not buying this for gaming. You're buying this to be a media transcoding powerhouse. Let's talk about that. So this is the Intel Arc A310 from Sparkle. It's a single slot, low profile card with four gigs of VRAM and a TDP of just 50 watts. Those numbers aren't very impressive, are they? Well, joke's on you because that's what makes this thing so great. For just $100, you get a card that will fit in pretty much any chassis, doesn't require external power, and is extremely good at transcoding. Brett, you keep saying transcoding, pretty sure they don't allow that in Texas. So for those of you that only tuned in because you saw a tiny GPU that would pair with your tiny hands, let me briefly explain what transcoding is. When you record, watch, or illegally download videos, they have to be packaged in something called a codec. A codec is essentially an algorithm for how to digitally store that video, and there are quite a few out there. Some of the most popular ones you hear about are H.264, H.265, or HEVC, ProRes, and most recently, AV1. There are plenty more of those out there, but for the sake of this video, I'll just keep it high level. Now, the thing with codecs is that they each have their pros and cons. H.264 and H.265 are the most popular ones in the world because they're good at taking the raw video format and compressing it down into a much smaller file that is easier to store and stream. The downside of those codecs though is that if you're a content creator, these formats are a bitch to edit. You need a powerful machine to decode or read these files when editing. There are some cool videos out there that get into way more detail about different codecs and why you would prefer one over the other. But all of that to say, the most popular codecs in the world suck to deal with, unless you have a dedicated engine built into your processor that only exists to do encoding and decoding, transcoding. There are two major applications that require transcoding, hosting a media server and video editing, both things that I do on the regular. Let's start with the media server aspect. I run Plex to host all of my media but the concept is the same if you're using Jellyfin or whatever. When someone plays your content from your server, there are two ways they can stream it, direct or transcoded. Which one is determined by quite a few things. The codec that the video is stored as, the resolution, and the bitrate. If the client is compatible with all of those, then they can stream the media directly and there isn't much the server hardware has to do. However, if one of those things isn't compatible, most commonly the bitrate or the codec, then the server will have to transcode that media in real time so that the client can watch it. True story, I saw one of my buddies was streaming Oppenheimer from my Plex at 720p, but that's a 4K movie. Why watch it at 720p? Well, it's an H.265 video with a bitrate of 35 megabits per second, and apparently his wife watched it too many times in 4K and actually used up a lot of their data cap, so transcoding to the rescue. Obviously, this requires the server to flex its muscles a bit. Here's the thing though, if your media is stored as H.265, H.264, or even AV1, then this little GPU can actually do that for you. This is called hardware transcoding. Regular transcoding or software transcoding is when the transcoding is handled by the CPU. For the record, software transcoding is much less efficient than hardware. Let me just show you. I'm gonna load up six movies at the same time on a Plex server that has this A310 in it. Then I'm gonna force the server to live transcode all of that at the same time. This is a mix of 1080p, 4K, H.264, and H.265 media. Check this out, the A310 isn't missing a beat and has no issues at all with all of these. What happens if we turn off hardware transcoding though? Yeah, we're struggling with just two streams. This is the power of dedicated encoders built into your hardware. I know what you're thinking, Brett, Nvidia and AMD both have built-in transcoding hardware and so do Intel processors with QuickSync. You are 100% correct. As for Nvidia and AMD, while they make objectively better GPUs for gaming, they're still surprisingly behind on their media encoders and some of their lower end models don't even have any. So if you tell me for just $100, I can add a card to my server that's gonna greatly reduce the workload on my CPU when all my Plex users are streaming the newest episode of Fallout, sign me up. Here are some raw transcoding numbers to compare the different hardware. Pause the video if you wanna study it like some kind of nerd. 
The other reason why I love this video card is for video editing. Now we already covered codecs and how certain ones can be a pain to deal with unless you have dedicated encoders for it. Well, that's no different when editing. Similar to how most of the content you consume and stream is done with H.264 and H.265, well, so is the content you create. Almost every cell phone and camera is going to record in H.264 or H.265 for the efficiency reasons we mentioned before. This is great since it helps keep storage requirements low, but when it comes time to edit, yuck. Well, good thing we have our A310 because this thing chews through some H.264. I can slap multiple videos on my timeline in a mix of crap codecs and this little thing handles playback and scrubbing surprisingly well. If you don't do content creation, this may not look impressive, but let me show you two other scenarios. Here's one with my RTX 4090, a $2,000 GPU. Gee, that looks about the same. Exactly. Now take a look at what happens with no hardware transcoding. Yeah, I, I just threw up a little bit. Okay, yeah, yeah, nobody is gonna be editing video without some kind of media encoder, whether that be Intel QuickSync built into your processor or any decent NVIDIA or AMD GPU. Let me throw this scenario at you. You build a Threadripper build because you want the most badass CPU on the planet, then you throw in an RTX 4090 because, hey, your wife already left you, so why not? You then record some video in the high quality yet efficient H.264 10-bit 422. That's gonna run like ass, but for 1 20th of the price of that RTX 4090, you can have this little guy and it'll pick up the slack for you. All right, yeah, the Plex scenario is obviously the more popular and much more useful use case for this thing. If you're spending like $5,000 on your editing rig, then you should probably be recording in ProRes. I mean, that's what my main cameras record in, but that's for another video. This video was to explain why this Intel A310 is my favorite GPU out right now. It's not the fastest, it doesn't have the most VRAM, it's not particularly good at gaming, but it's cheap, tiny, uses very little power, and punches way above its weight class for hardware transcoding. Let me know if you've snagged one of these and what you think. I actually have its big brother in the A770. Maybe it's time for a little sibling competition video. But that's all I have for you today. If you want to snag one of these, then please use my affiliate link below so I can make like a dollar or something. If you like this video, then go ahead and drop a like. If you like content like this, then subscribe. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my super efficient media encoder who can transcode 4K H.264 10-bit 422 content with no problem at all. Y'all are dope. And if you're still watching, you're an AMD RX 6400. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.